What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this Saturday night, October 14th, 2023. It's about 8.50. Yeah, right around 8.50 p.m. California time out here in California where it's pretty crazy. Uh, latest activity shows some movement into New Zealand. We got a 4.3 coming in here within the last hour. Uh, pretty deep. 219 kilometers deep that is associated here with the subduction zone underneath this area of the Hikarangi subduction zone so pay close attention out there also got some activity stirring up here in Afghanistan look at that 6.6 .6 earthquake coming in here to the area right around Afghanistan looks like uh, eastern Afghanistan let me see what we got here from the EMSC model uh, a little bit of up, down, degrading, upgrading uh, from this earthquake. But it was felt, it looks like. Um, source parameters have not, uh, source parameters reviewed by a seismologist. So we're looking at a 6.4, a Western Afghanistan, um, 10 kilometers deep. Now, goodness, uh, this area here has seen a handful of earthquakes over the last week or so um, in an odd area USGS not picking up on that yet let me see exactly where this is taking place here uh, Western Afghanistan it looks like potentially right is that in that same area looks like it's in that same area where we've seen some earthquake activity here in the last um, last week we did see 6.3 and some other earthquake activity as well. We have to go back a couple more days. So we need to include the past 30 days uh, in order to see some of the larger scale movement that took place back here. We've seen 6.3, 6.3, quite a few fives. Uh, also another 6.3. And if this earthquake here coming in is a 6.6 .6 magnitude, that would make the uh, largest earthquake here uh, in this area of Afghanistan since this uh, swarming activity has kicked up here in this area we have not seen a lot of earthquake activity here historically this is rather rare it's unusual uh, to see this type of earthquake activity here specifically within this region of Afghanistan um, I'll show you guys the historical data here and looking here at the uh, legend as you can see, there's not a whole lot of dots out here as far as larger scale movement goes. Out here in eastern Iran, western or uh, eastern Afghanistan, yes. But specifically out here in this area of the world, it's rather rare to see larger scale activity taking place out there uh, in this area of Afghanistan. So this comes at a heightened movement time frame. When we're, uh, you know, obviously looking at the Izu Trench earthquake swarm, right? You guys remember that? Over the past 10, 14 days or so, we've seen quite a bit of earthquake activity here across the Izu Trench. Let me bring that up here real quick. Well, this is a lot of activity if you really look at it. But specifically, when you get down to the details, this activity was pretty much unprecedented here. Uh, looking at uh, over 100 earthquakes of large magnitude uh, large magnitudes here in this area quite a few sixes and fives and fours and many other earthquakes here uh, in this area of the Izu Trench and that took place roughly around the same time as we've seen uh, earthquake activity kick up here across western Afghanistan so there's some unusual earthquake activity taking place across the globe and uh, kind of leaning towards the possibility of something larger taking place here uh, in between these two regions of Afghanistan and the Izu Trench. Uh, I'm thinking somewhere probably more than likely around the Taiwan area or the southward, but that's just my wild guess. Either way, um, still seeing some activity stirring up out there, right? Look at this uh, P wave kicking in there to Thailand. S wave kicking in right now. More than likely, uh, let's see. Well, USGS reporting this is a 6.3, so that makes it the fourth 6.3 out here in this region that's rather rare if you really think about it to see this many earthquakes here in an unusual area uh within a short amount of time frame right there's no main quake 
Uh, I'm starting to think something big is brewing out here, folks, across this area in between these two zones here, the Izu Trench and the uh, Western Afghanistan area. Nepal, I think, is overdue for a large mega quake. Um, these areas of the subduction zone can easily see some eight pointers out here across Nepal. So I, I, I don't think, and I keep saying that, I don't think we're over, I don't think we're done yet with the, uh, the reasoning as to why this activity is taking place. So right now, 6.3 uh, earthquake coming in. The USGS, uh, let's see, they have been reviewed eight kilometers deep. It's a really shallow earthquake as most of these earthquakes have uh, taken place here in this area, relatively shallow. One, two, three, four. Four 6.3 earthquakes here uh, in the last um, last week. So be on guard out there. Uh, I, I still think something bigger is brewing in the uh, the region out here. All right, uh, New Zealand. Let's go ahead and zoom back in here to New Zealand. 4.3. This is a little concerning as well. This is a deeper earthquake. Uh, out here in the New Zealand area and um, that was uh, followed up here about 15 minutes later uh, with a 6.3 in Afghanistan Western Afghanistan so you know one might think this has nothing to do with what's going on up here in Afghanistan but technically it does if you look at the general uh, geology here of the plate tectonics westward plate movement here with the pacific plate right you get some deeper scale activity here into the new zealand area um does tend to add stress out here across this area westward and we're talking about areas around afghanistan as well um so thousands of miles do not really mean anything in terms of geology uh, when it comes to plate dynamics out here you know two what do we got two four that's a lot of miles from here to there for us. But when you move around these little pieces of the puzzle, that is nothing. We've seen earthquake act uh, activity get triggered on the opposite side of the globe uh, following some large scale movement. So every little piece of the puzzle that you move affects one other plate boundary out here. So it looks like that westward plate movement is affecting further strain out here across the western Afghanistan area which leads me to believe this area right here should be on guard for some mega quake possibility out here it's been bouncing back and forth here between the Izu Trench and Afghanistan uh, so pay very close attention out here in this region I should probably circle this for reference later but uh, if you guys are watching this pay close attention to the circle circular area all right, let's go ahead and zoom in to uh, make sure I got that uh, muted. Let's go ahead and go in <clears throat> into New Zealand area and see what we have going on. GeoNet servers reporting a 4.6, uh, 201 kilometers underneath this area that's associated now with the Hikarangi subduction zone that sits off the eastern coast there of North Island. Uh, let's bring up the drums and I'm sure yeah, there we go obviously it showed up pretty nicely across the majority of the seismograph station that's that's going to be uh, the most recent quake here on the map there was some previous earthquake activity out there uh, that is the Kermadec Trench 5.7 from uh, last night so notice the 24 hour map here last night's activity there along the Kermadec Trench uh, the four-pointer there into the uh, Hikarangi subduction zone, uh, more recent. So that, that's what you guys are seeing there on the map. Aside from that, um, it almost looks like that's about the only activity I'm seeing there across New Zealand. I showed up spectacular there on the North Island far as that uh, earthquake there along the Kermadec Trench. But that was a 5.7, pretty deep earthquake. Deeper earthquake down here across the Hikarangi subduction zone. That will add further strain across the area. Keep an eye on this region as well. Uh, you know, the Hikarangi is definitely, I think, overdue in terms of large-scale movement. 
Uh, let's go ahead and check out the West Coast area of California where we did see the eclipse today. Had a couple breaks in the clouds uh, earlier in the morning uh, just before the peak of the uh, annular eclipse. I got some cool pictures, but uh, again, it was uh, clouds rolled over and pretty much ruined the majority of it, but I'm thankful for at least seeing it. Um, not a whole lot of movement out here across Northern California currently for now. Uh, Southern California, roughly about the same. Only microquake activity is uh, stirring up down there. But uh, for the most part, all the movement has been out here across the Western Pacific. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here. Let me double check and see if we got the uh, uh, Yellowstone seismograph stations up. I don't think they are. Doesn't, well, whoa, what do you know? I spoke too soon. Let me double check this mixture. 1014? Yeah, yeehaw. We got everything back up and running. Uh, but, uh, sorry to disappoint you, there's not a whole lot of activity stirring up out there. Not a whole lot of earthquake movement, but luckily, thankfully, uh, thank you there for the uh, University of Utah and the USGS for bringing these stations back up for us to monitor. And you can tell there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity out there. Uh, one earthquake out here in Oklahoma. Velma. Hey, Velma. 2.0. 4.2 kilometers deep out here in the... What do you guys think is out here? What What is out here? Maybe some beautiful camping sites? Probably not. Uh, these look like some tanks out here. Some oil fields. Those are tanks. No doubt. Out here within the vicinity. Right here as well. Literally within feet of the 2.0. So a little bit of earthquake activity um, out there across the center portion of the country. Nothing major going on here uh, yet. And that goes for the most part down in South America as well. Um, but keep an eye on this region. You know, a bunch of sixes up here in western Afghanistan where we don't normally see activity is a little on the suspect side here. I think... Uh, I think these are little telltale signs of something that may be coming on the larger size out here in this region. So, and we're talking about well above a seven, probably an eight or higher in this area. Where that's going to be specifically, I can't say, uh, but there's been too many signs, telltale signs of earthquake swarms up here against the Western Pacific. Well, over here across the uh, areas of Afghanistan, and those uh, little middle points out here tend to tell a little bit of a story. So keep an eye on that region. Uh, let's see here. There's the S waves coming in here. That's a, actually a pretty significant S wave. Uh, that's in Thailand, 6.3. Um, let's see what we got here. There's a P wave here showing up in... Uh, that almost looks like in Chile. That That's quite impressive if that's the case. Philippines picking that up as well. Some of these seismograph stations may be tuned or amplified a little bit more strongly compared to others. But uh, that's a pretty significant S wave showing up there. I wouldn't doubt it if maybe this thing gets upgraded slightly. Um, let me go back here. EMSC is still holding on as a 6.6. Uh, USGS with a 6.3 so uh, we may we may see a little bit of adjustment I think more towards the higher magnitude um, here from the USGS but we'll, we'll kind of watch that and see if they do or not uh, space weather activity space weather there's not a whole lot here folks I mean the annular eclipse is pretty spectacular I've seen some beautiful images out there and um I seen a little bit here in Northern California, but not like what I wanted, unfortunately. Um, looking at the sunspots out here, there's quite a few. Uh, the only dynamic regions that I would be watching is specifically this area right here, and maybe the new active region coming around the eastern limb of the sun, which is uh, doesn't look like it's currently named yet, but it should be named. Uh, 3467 once they get on the ball 
far as naming these sunspots out here. But uh, for the most part, 95% uh, chance for a C flare and flare 25, X flare around 1% chance. Not a whole lot going on for the auroras. Um, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tomorrow sometime. Got to attend to the brisket. I think it's done. Coming up on, oh man, about 14 hours of cooking time. So I'm going to pull it off and uh, wrap it up and we'll have a little bit of that tomorrow. Take care, folks. Have a good night.